Yeah, so it started with event day corn toothpicks and the UV and clubs and parties and dream catchers with wool. And then that grew into corporate event decor, um, you know, all quite liquid and cold. Wow. Yeah. So obviously inspired by Zaha Hadid, um, uh, you know, but wherever I could achieve was my fabric forms back, you know, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago, uh, domes and uh, yeah. You like, created all these things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, laser cutting. Uh, there's one hanging above me. Um, using obviously the, as you can see, the Fibonacci spiral and the sunflower yeah. in my, uh, you know, and then subsequently I sold my business because I just got tired, but I also drew a little bit of sacred geometry in between. So maybe, you know, there's some things I can offer to your students as well. Uh, mm -hmm. we developed some amazing skills. We use templates, like various templates, as you can see, and then you start seeing shapes and we just use pencils and little pens to outline them. You know, work with graphic design. So those are some things I can offer as a, as a barter and uh, as a collab. Mm -hmm. um, then I took permaculture course from Jeff Lawton. And the picture on the right is my, you know, garden design was a dome home and a food forest and all of that. And there is a school, oh. uh, Academy of Bioarchitecture. Academy of Bioarchitecture is what I've been building in South Africa. And then subsequently, oh, the, wow. the COVID happened. So I was drawing a lot of these homes in the beginning, and then I went moved on to the land for the first time in 2009 and, and uh, started experimenting with these things. Uh, mm -hmm. Left my business in Johannesburg, and that obviously had a little bit of a collapse, but I got to experience a bit of with Mike Reynolds, you know, Mike Reynolds from Earthship Academy. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So I built with him. I went to Taos. I took his one-month course. I went to Mexico. I learned ferrocement. Those, uh, the picture on the top right is not mine. That's from my teacher, Steve Kochler. Oh. He's in Mexico. Yeah. And the others are mine. The, these are the the the, <clears throat> the ferrocement um, uh, seashell that I built, 11 by 6.5 meters. Um, wow. <clears throat> yeah, so lots of design. I, I, can't, I can't put myself to like one thing. Here's a food grower. It's got a worm inspired by garden tower. <clears throat> I'm sure you've seen those. It's got a worm worm thing, and then the red worms come out, and we and there is a prototype in the IBC tank, the the 250 gallon tank. Um, <clears throat> yeah, again, you know, drawing and building, drawing and building. So there's a prototype uh, of a cobra branding, um, and then I got into the whole permaculture because my toilet overflowed downstairs from city sewer because the river right. the river broke the sewage pipe and the sewage started coming up my bathroom so i start, had to get all my everything off the water grid so i right. took a pool natural after three wetlands the two one the two failed and the third one worked i built a wall right. because the same river flooded my garden and wiped out all my medicinal herbs so the wall was stood as you can see i used a bit of curves here and super adobe and curves has been like a big thing. And that's why I'm kind of, con I'm connecting with you because I'm seldom <clears throat> understood in the world. People are like, but why curves? And as you can see from this wall, <laughs> you can imagine what happens to standard brick walls when the river goes up nine oh, years. Yeah. And I was able to stop it with my curves because not, they're, they're only, you know, they're strong. I, I build the underground water tank. Uh, a 40,000 liter. There's the pool with the wall. <laughs> I, got, I got the pool to drinking quality. I have lab tests. I got it to drinking quality in the middle of the city using also biochar. I learned biochar from Josh Kearns uh, in, in Thailand, but he's got a PhD in biochar from America. So there's the wetland for the pool. Uh, traveled the world, taught a few workshops. Uh, Acrete can do with my eyes closed. Super Adobe obviously got nine kilometers already built to date. Um, <clears throat> yeah, in South Africa, build some domes. This is the home I'm sitting in right now with these curved walls, but the curved walls yeah. are a problem. Then <clears throat> I got, uh, you know, these are flying machines, there's t-shirts. It's like, it doesn't end. <laughs> and uh, in Bra for Brazil, I designed a house and we build it in a workshop style. Again, um, you know, very nice. So, so it's very strong and beautiful. I use this material called hyper adobe. I'm sure you've heard about it. It's it's like a potato net for potatoes. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got uh, uh, my first 
my first um, uh, a blueprint of the Gothic arch. So all the mistakes I've made in the home I'm sitting in right now, I've put here into like details of what to do. So so I can go into detail. I can go into detail, but um, I'm obviously looking for a team to collaborate with other architects because I'm more of a visionary and like mm -hmm. multidisciplinary here's all my designs i do them all in, in rhino i teach rhino uh, i teach a bio architecture rhino course um yeah wow. so all these homes actually buried up until this they're, they're, they're my version of the earth ships they're the ties there's like obviously a low-cost mm -hmm. version of an earth ship with polycarbonate uh or windows and uh, here's another one this one is actually i teach in the course how to draw this very design again it's buried up until the orange line Obviously, like an earthship, it's got plants in the greenhouse. Yeah. But I'm, I'm developing it for a really cold climate with no sun. So, right. uh, you know, earthship is all great when it's in Taos, but uh, obviously it needs some additional tweaks. So here's all the, I went first into the virtual reality because it was so difficult to plan all these pipes and planned out the the, the different angles of the sun. Obviously, that's biomimicry, you know, so the back wall heats up. It's it's an earthship with uh, um, basically excess heat that the earthship dumps. We want to channel it into the berm and use right. these solar tubes, which got like a torch behind, like a mirror and an, a and a and a polycarbonate to passively suck. Yeah. There is yeah. a septic. The green is the septic that's wrapped also in a warm pipe, so the bacteria can heat up. So lots of designs, lots and lots of design work. Like it's 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 not stopping. So th there is the actual home. Um, I started building it. I'm realizing now that I'm <clears throat> socionics. I'm Hamlet. I'm I, I'm I'm like a visionary. I need to be with people. So going homesteading out far in the sticks is not me. Um, you know, I need right. to be people right. and I want to be like, so my dream has been to create, build an academy of bioarchitecture here in South Africa, I've, you know, uh, left that country. And so this is my design for a bioarchitecture school with plants, obviously taking the Russian style of the, the minaret. Um, yeah, this is one of my latest designs. Actually, I've lost the idea of the, of the home and I've decided why can't we just have a greenhouse that's like tropics in the middle of mm -hmm. Canada you know, so mm -hmm. big berm, again, all those technologies that I've shown you, nice Russian design or not, I'll show you another one. And basically creating Bali with a natural pool that I've created so people can swim because usually like wow. orangery or botanical gardens, they can just walk around. Here, there'll be a yeah. cafe and here's the one with a geodesic dome. I, I, I forgot to put it in this drawing, but there's a geodesic dome with little pools and beach and obviously lots of plants and people can sit and enjoy and there is a uh, and of course, the wood chipper, the wood chipper, I've redone the research, the chipping of the wood gives you the same energy through heat, like compost, if you chip it versus just burning it. And then you're left with like 10 oh. cubic meters of good soil.